Uh, I turn to myself now for five minutes for questions. Um, Ms. Kerner, NASA announced last week that Artemis II is now targeted for launch in September 2025 and Artemis III targeted for launch in September 2026. Can you share the scheduling margin built into the updated Artemis II and III launches? So thank you, Chairman Lucas. Um, appreciate the question today. We are, have adjusted the Artemis II schedule based on crew safety. As you recall, from coming out of Artemis I, we had a tremendously success, successful mission. And one of the follow-on investigations from that mission is the performance of the heat shield. That has taken us some time to analyze the data. The heat shield performed perfectly from a thermal perspective, but we saw some unusual characteristics, and we want to fully understand that before we put um, Reed, Victor, Christina, and Jeremy on Artemis II. So that has contributed to the delay in the mission. We have sufficient time to complete that investigation with a 10-month adjustment to that launch schedule. Also, with Artemis II, we have additional capabilities on the Orion spacecraft. The life support systems have proven to be more difficult and challenging to develop, and during the testing of some of those systems, we identified an issue with the digital motor controller that has impacted our ability to be able to continue the processing the vehicle as previously planned. The additional time that we have, gi have um, given ourselves in the adjusted schedule permits us the opportunity to address the challenges that we've seen with that digital motor controller. So we have a number of issues, and those issues are all encapsulated with this, this margin that we have on the schedule for the September 2025. There is margin built into that schedule for us to complete all of the necessary testing and to address all of the regular processing that we lessons learned that we had from the Artemis One launch. To the rest of the panel, based on these margins, do you believe that these revised schedule launches dates are realistic? Whoever would care to touch that first. Yeah, Chairman Lucas, I can jump in. Um, I, I think for Artemis II, certainly that that provides more time to, to get through the, the issues and, and uh, figure out the heat shield life support. Um, challenges that Ms. Kerner referenced. The, the one thing that jumps out with the revised Artemis III date is the, the span of time between Artemis II and III is, is one year. So if you, if you consider the successful conclusion of Artemis I in 2022, and now it's gonna be a few years to the 25 date to do essentially uh, the same Artemis test flight the second time with the crew. Artemis three is more complicated, so there's not a lot of time, and as you saw with Artemis one, there are things that are gonna happen that you need to learn, that you need to investigate. One year is not a lot of time to do that learning, turn around and be ready for a, a September uh, 2026 launch date. So that's, that's the one scheduled pressure that we see with the, the new dates. Any observations, gentlemen, that you'd care to add? I would say that the Artemis, uh, the, the, Artemis circumlunar mission is, um, I think, very doable on the time scale that NASA has said. I don't think the Artemis III, the landing mission, is at all realistically scheduled. Thank you, Chairman Lucas. I think NASA will continue to be challenged on the schedule front, particularly with the Artemis III mission. You know, historically, uh, certain space flight missions uh, in terms of going from contract to development have taken, you know, eight and a half years. And with HLS, NASA was trying to do it in a much more condensed time frame. So I think based on lessons learned from Artemis II, I think that the agency will be better positioned to come out with a more realistic launch date for Artemis III. Um, Ms. Kerner, can you share with the committee what milestones NASA uses to measure contractor performance on the human landing system and space suit contracts and along with that, what the consequences are for contractors if they don't meet the milestones by the assigned deadline? Okay. So um, with regards to the, the contract milestones, we have a number of milestones that are significant for the Artemis III um, landing, ultimate crew landing. The first would be an uncrewed demo. That has to happen prior to the crewed landing. We are keeping track on um, SpaceX, our prime contractor for the human landing system. We're keeping track of their progress. If you recall, they've had a number of test flights 
They will actually conduct their next test flight here, um, likely in the, the February timeframe, and they have um, good schedule margin to support that launch. We are anticipating a number of launches in calendar year 24 by our SpaceX industri um, industry partners to support the development of not only the human landing system capability, but also their cryogenic fuel transfer capability, which is essential for us to be able to understand um, the process for refueling the human landing system prior to when we send our crews. So we have various milestones throughout their contract that enable us to be able to measure their performance. We also have recently made contract modifications that allow us to incentivize them to meet those milestones on the schedule that we need in order for us to support the launch date of, of, of the crew in September of 2026. I will note that we do parallel processing of a lot of our missions, so it's not like we have just one year between Artemis II and Artemis III to get everything accomplished. We are right now working on the hardware for Artemis III, and in particular, I will note, um, things like the European Service Module will be shipping here in the spring to the Kennedy Space Center for processing and to complete assembly of the Orion spacecraft. So I fully expect that before we ever launch Artemis II, Artemis III vehicle processing will be far enough along that we will be able to take advantage of the one year between the two missions to be able to fully be ready for the Artemis III mission in September of 26. I will also note that if you recall this, the um, press conference that we did just last week when we announced the slip to those launch dates, we had our 11 industry partners online with us for that, and all of them have signed up for the launch date of Artemis III that we are currently showing. Thank you. And before I yield to the ranking member, I would note that I've had several conversations with the administrator, and he has a great deal of confidence in you. I just want to pass that along. 